Hi, how's it going? This is Ashley Rose Nova. You can call me Ash. Call me Ashley Rose. I am with TWM News. That is in the UK. I'm not in the UK, so I always feel like I have to explain that to people. But here we are, and uh, I'm here with Taylor. Taylor, how are you doing today? I am so great. I am busy, insanely busy, but I am so happy to be busy. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. You know, it's nice to see you. Um, it's nice to see you on Impact again. So yeah. how are things? It's been a long time since we've seen you. How have you been? Yeah, uh, I've had kind of the year from hell. Um, you know, the universe is the uh, the master of all and you can't control what gets thrown at you. And unfortunately, uh, right around the time that I made my debut after 10 years of retirement, um, back last, gosh, where was August? <laughs> Whenever it was, I've lost all time. Um, my, I went through a really messy divorce and custody battle. And during that time, my dad ended up getting really sick. He had a massive heart attack and was in a coma for six weeks. And now he's home. He's independent living. My personal life has really stabilized. I was able to take that time, do some personal work on myself. And I'm truly, truly, truly the happiest I've ever been. So coming back at Bound for Glory was really this incredible full circle moment for me and all I've been through. And it's like, okay, I am back. This is my time. And, you know, it was kind of like a full start situation. <laughs> but I'm back and this is the way it was supposed to go. So here I am. That's great. You know, when I was um, on one of the post shows, we were talking about, you know, who was going to come out, you know, who was going to debut in this gauntlet during Bound for Glory. And surprisingly, I think I was the only one that mentioned you. I was like, wait a minute, isn't Taylor still there? And they're like, oh, my God. And I'm like, yeah, like I would think like I think she's going to come out. I just have this gut feeling. Oh, crazy. Yeah, I was the only one that called it. And I was like, yes, I was right. Me. Sure. I solidarity yes and you know as far as you know things that happen in the world you know the world's been crazy I'll be yeah. honest with you yeah. uh you know I've always like said that you know I'm a big believer in just if things are meant to happen they will meant to, they are meant to happen and if it's for you then it's always meant for you yep I'm you know just as much much universe as you are as everyone is so that's yeah. truly how I feel. So I see you have an upcoming match, at least, you know, that's going to be aired. Yeah. Haven't seen it yet. And I don't <laughs> spoilers and I wasn't there, but uh, how do you feel? How do, how do you feel being back in the ring? Amazing. It's so weird. Uh, you know, I, I took 10 years off, obviously, and I, I became a firefighter and I became a mom and I was totally checked out of wrestling. Like I supported all my friends. I've been watching them all, uh, you know, go on their own beautiful journeys and they're at major companies and they've been doing incredible things. And I've been staying in shape, but I've been training functionally to be a firefighter. So it's more about strength, less about an aesthetic look. And, uh, you know, I'm 10 years older. I'm not 26 anymore. I'm 36. But I actually feel the most healthy, the strongest, the most steadfast in the ring than I did when I left wrestling. So I actually feel, and I think it's more like an internal thing. Like I feel mentally strong. I feel physically strong. It's like this, this perfect synchronicity of mind, body, soul, and spirit. And I'm just in such a different place that it feels right to be back now like I feel like it's not about unfinished business it's about this is the person that I've always been I just wasn't wasn't in the right mind frame then you know it's kind of 10 years ago or I shouldn't say then because everything happens for a reason and I, I, I went this journey in this path but now it just it feels so good to be back I know it sounds so cheesy and cliche but like this is my time and um yeah, anyone I step in the ring with, I'm just so excited because it's so fresh. I've missed out on this whole generation of female professional wrestlers. And the pool is so deep and so diverse than it was when I left. So it's just 
bring on every challenger, every competitor. There's so many women that I've had long histories with that I haven't had to wrestle, haven't had the opportunity to wrestle. Like, you know, your Mickey James. I haven't had a chance to ever have a match with her. We've both been in the business for over half our lives. Uh, so there's so much to be done. And I'm just honestly, I'm just like, put me in coach. Like I've been warming the bench for a year. Uh, and I couldn't be more elated than right now to thrive on all these opportunities. Yeah. You know, speaking of Mickey, that's right. You two haven't crossed paths. No, we've had these surprising and you've been, you've been around for quite some time. I, you know, I remember you when, I mean, cause you stood out to me as, you know, like you were unique, but you had like an appeal. You had like, you know, me being like, you know, highly into like the punk rock scene and everything, the music scene. I could relate to you as a knockout. So it was totally cool to see you back. Now Mickey's doing her last rodeo. Yeah. So you getting in there? You part of that? Right. I I came back. I feel like honestly, because before I went off, you know, when Mickey just kind of came back and she was doing this crossover with NWA, her and I have always been good buddies, but we really bonded over these past six months because we're both these really like spiritually bonded women. And it's, you know, I, I relate more to the witch side. She relates more to her Native American indigenous roots, but it's still this really amazing bond that we can talk about outside of wrestling, outside of being these kind of veterans and moms with so many commonalities. <clears throat> but we had been talking about you know, having our match finally. And then obviously life happened. But now that she's on her last rodeo, we're both kind of like, obviously this is, this was supposed to happen. Like we're going to get our moment now. Like, um, you know, I'm hoping she, she doesn't retire and I can like change her mind. But if she does retire fully, I would be so honored to be part of her last rodeo. Yeah. You know, she's, uh, she's making rounds. I mean, she just had a uh, Mia Yim. Yeah, you know, I saw her back in uh, Dallas, you know, facing, a, you know, some up and comers. Uh, anyone you interested in stepping in the ring with besides Mickey? I mean, we got a, a huge roster going on, a very strong knockouts division. I think this is like one I, you know, I tell people if you've never seen Impact, that women's division, to me, it's not even just about women's wrestling. Yeah, it's, it's wrestling like you got to check it out. It's such a diverse strong roster any other interest besides mickey yeah and just to like elaborate on what you said the one thing coming back for that gauntlet that i thought was so cool which you don't really see with other divisions it's not like it was labeled an intergender gauntlet it was just a gauntlet and there was knockouts in there and it wasn't it wasn't even a conversation anymore which is so crazy to me because intergender wrestling was so taboo at the end of my first career and now it just it just is a thing like it's it's just matches it's not intergender and i just think impact has always been on the cutting edge of pushing and perpetuating women's wrestling to where it is now and they're still able to do that even though it is on a smaller scale versus your wwe and your aew but they're still bringing this like it's so different and it, i will always be an impact girl because of what they do for women's wrestling and it makes the other companies step up because they have to compete um that being said that whole locker room is all new to me like I want a piece of Deanna Perrazzo I want a piece of my fellow Canadian Chelsea Green there's Taya Valkyrie there's Rosemary there's Havoc like oh god the locker room is so big like there's Tasha Steeles there's so much going on there's now the knockouts tag team division is back you know, Sarita and I, we held the first belts as the first ever knockouts tag team champion. So there's so much I want to do. Like I got, I got stuff to do in a short amount of time because I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> oh, you look great. Come on. <laughs> You're going to do well. You did well in that gauntlet. Uh, speaking about the knockouts uh, tag titles, you know, I always like to do a thing where I ask the impact faithful, Hey, you got any questions for, who? so it gives them an idea of who I'm going to interview next. Sure. One of the questions, I believe it was from AO who's always putting up the matches, you know, cause he loves impact wrestling. Yeah. He had asked, 
any, you know, any plans in so many words, I want to say it was him. I have to double check, but if it is, I, it sounds like a question he would ask <sighs> if you would be willing to go back for the tag titles and who do you see yourself teaming with for mm -hmm. those titles? Oh, that's a toughie. I don't know. Like, cause Sarita being my partner, there was so many parallels, but we were so different as competitors. Like, you know, the, the history, we're both Canadian. She brought me over to Mexico uh, and she was living there fully fluent in Spanish. She was a massive help. And then, you know, lo and behold, we, we were in TNA together and we were both heavily influenced by Lucha style. So we made so much sense in the ring together. Um, you know, it's funny. I want to have this match against Mickey James, but I also think we would make so much sense as tag partners, uh, being these veterans, being these long-standing baby faces, uh, you know, similar but different enough move set, similar in size. I feel, and, and then, you know, the kind of this like spiritual bond, I feel like there would that would make a lot of sense like i would i would be honored to be in the ring with mickey in any capacity whether she's an opponent or a tag team partner we just have so much history as like friends that i would yeah that i feel like mickey would be a good tag partner you know who knows maybe after you know her last rodeo maybe <laughs> so, that'll keep her around you know you never know like i mean <laughs> she didn't say retire so i mean but she never said anything about tagging right she just said retire as mick james as a singles wrestler you never know hey i mean how many times do we hear the word like retire or like a hint of it in this industry totally. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's uh yeah no i i think that would be a great team up uh it would be great to see and i think you know the fans would win in that aspect they would win yeah. and <laughs> receiving that let's see ryan from impact faithful wants to know which female wrestler have you had the most um felt the most fortunate in sharing the ring with and this could be anywhere outside of impact as well oh yeah uh, i would definitely say hands down awesome kong uh kia she was you know her, the storyline we ran was probably the most important to my career and probably built my career on TV. Cause I had been with WWE prior to TNA, but just in the developmental system and the developmental system was very different in 2006, 2007 than it is now, which is basically NXT, um, which is just like a smaller scale version of Ron Smackdown. It's, you know, you, you get to be a superstar essentially. It wasn't that way when I was there. Um, but Awesome Kong had built this incredible career for herself independently and in Japan. She was well respected. And um, yeah, it was a really tricky situation. I was brought into this company where there was a full locker room of knockouts who were really doing something different than we saw on any other major show at that time. And I was thrust in as this fan in the audience to win the $25,000 uh, Awesome Kong Challenge. And, uh, you know, politically, that could really create some, some waves. And she basically kind of gave me the nod before the match and said, you know, show me what you got, kid, because this is a make or break moment. And uh, thank God it was a make. And we were on the road together for a good two years doing house shows and doing matches on TV. And we honestly had like the most beautiful dynamic it was just so much love all the time and we had a lot of laughs in and out of the ring but I learned a lot from her uh the way she structured matches her pacing and just as a human she's you know she's this incredible huge beast right like this force to be reckoned with but usually you know the bigger they are the harder they fall like she has such a big heart too and she really taught me kind of from a veteran stance how I want to dictate a locker room when I ever when if and whenever I have the privilege to come back kind of as a veteran which now I do and I know how I like to uh, convey myself and if I ever need to assert myself so she she was very important to my career both on television um, what she taught me and as well how to be a veteran in a locker room that's good. You know, she was uh, probably one of the most like standout knockouts, you know, 
Oh yeah. At that time, you had. I mean, I remember her, and then you know she had that little run at you know WWE. Yep. You know, and then she uh, landed. You know, Glow. She was on Glow, the show. Oh, wasn't she incredible? Yeah, she was so good. Oh my god. Let's see. Um, my friends, my homies at Total Nonstop Impact, the Impact pot, one of the Impact you know fan podcasts. They want to know. I'm sure it's probably Mark. He wants to know what is uh, what your favorite incense to burn is. Oh, lovely question. I love this. Okay. Um, I have three in rotation because uh, I'm a bit of a lazy witch. So I don't always uh, use my white sage uh, to cleanse my house, but I do use white sage incense. I have white sage and lavender and then um my witchy Reiki master, she had uh, gifted me these money and cents. I couldn't tell you what they smell like, but they're supposed to encourage financial abundance. So I'm, I'm all about this. And I also had a, a love and sex incense that she had gifted me. Again, couldn't tell you what the scent is, but I burnt through that bit and I'm still single. So. Obviously wasn't my time. <laughs> That's okay. It, it happens, you know, but in the right time, you know, things will occur. Right. Like, I was, universe, like I'm busy. Like I, when am I going to find love and romance? Like I've got stuff to do right now. Hey, patience. <laughs> it happens when you're not looking. At least that's what they tell me. I don't know. No. Are you single too, girl? Mm-hmm. Solidarity. It's hard times out there. Streets are, streets are real. Not that I don't have offers, you know, nope. so many of them, but I just, I'm so busy and I'm just like, it, it, Hey, things happen when they happen. Hey, all I'm hearing from you is boundaries and self-worth. And I support that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And the J King wants to know, uh, are you going to be at impact long-term? Uh, how, what does it look like? Do you plan on being here the next three years, one year, any estimate? Do you, That's have- a- I, I ha- I'm back. I've been sat at home for a year. I'm back. I have no timeline, um, but I, I, I don't have any plans of going away anytime soon. So I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. You know, I was wondering, and for the longest time, I was like, I wonder what happened to Taylor. Like, she was here. <laughs> but, no one else. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a, a question, at least that I want to ask. Uh, Bow for Glory, uh, you and Bully Ray. let's put that team up (laughs) okay so for the record back in 2008 I want to say uh we were on a UK tour uh our last night was in Dublin doesn't sound right Bournemouth England and uh, at the end of all the shows in the UK, we always got in the ring, all of the whole roster. We did like a celebratory, whatever. And Bubba thought it was hilarious to basically uh, hold me against my will and try to lay a big smooch on me. Well, my best friend Samoa Joe and other onlookers of the roster stood there and laughed. Um, but he didn't get the smooch in um, because I'm a lady. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, knowing that we were both kind of reintroducing ourselves back into the impact world that him, he's been away longer than I have. Uh, we just thought it would be this really hilarious, ha ha, full circle moment for us. Uh, he thought that it had never happened before. He thought, uh, <laughs> so I don't know, like I'm in such a different place in my life. I, you know, I think life is messy and it can be stressful and if you can't laugh at yourself and all the shortcomings that are thrown at you wrestling is supposed to be fun like Bubba is my brother we are not dating there is no romantic overtones (laughs) whatsoever so many like oh my god Taylor Wilde and Bully Ray are dating now uh I posted a photo with me and Joe there was like oh I had no idea they were dating I'm like so busy in my romantic life I had no idea um (laughs) but these like I've known these guys since I was 17 18 years old I'm 36 now it was just a moment that we thought was hilarious we knew the fans would get a kick out of it 
kind of that's the like long and short of it. And it and it worked wonders. It was a great photo op moment, like a real ha- hallmark moment. I thought it was hilarious. I was like, <laughs> but I did not. I was all this is going to be a photo. I know that whoever's doing the photos, bow for glory. This is going to be one of the shots that they use. That's why I was like, so, uh, you know, what's the story behind that? I was like, I know it can't be anything too serious, but I was like, it's still pretty entertaining. Total. And the other thing is too, like, uh, you know, we are at a place in the world, right. Where, you know, the pendulum has swung very far the other way to protect both men and women. Um, you know, we live much more in an HR world and I think it's really important that we take anything to do with consent very seriously. Um, so, you know, I make jokes about, uh, bully Ray, Bubba, he'll always be Bubba to me, uh, you know, held me against my will and tried to smooch me back in 2008, but it was all in ha ha. It was all in love. I don't actually mean that. And, uh, I just thought, you know, there's so much seriousness. Wrestling is probably one of the silliest things you can see on TV. You know what I mean? Like it's supposed to be this lighthearted sports entertainment. I just thought, you know what, we need some comedic relief (laughs) and that, that was me just kind of being like, you know, it's okay to make these haha moments. It's not good if that's all the knockouts are doing or all women are doing in the wrestling world, but it's okay to have silly moments too. Yeah, I thought it was great. You know, everyone, I, I, from what I saw, you know, I didn't, I thought like it was very enjoyable. You know, I thought the gauntlet was very, I was surprised, you know, how far up the card it was, but yeah, I felt like it needed, you know, it's supposed to be fun. The gauntlet is just right. supposed to be fun. You know, people that aren't like on the main card, you know, it's going to be entertaining. And right. I thought just where they placed it, it helped relieve the show because of all the, you know, as far as all the way the matches were set up, it was very, it was kind of serious. <laughs> like very, the, the story. Yeah. Yeah. So it gave us like an opportunity just to like enjoy and then get like reinvested into everything. So well, that makes it, happy. <laughs> yeah, you know, and like I said, you know, I, I've, you know, I believe wrestling is universal. It's, it should be universally entertaining. And, you know, I think impact does a great job of providing something for everyone. Yes. A little bit of something for everyone, at least not, if not every week, at least every pay-per-view, every Impact Plus event. Yeah. So that's what I think that they do amazing on. I agree. You know, it's very well balanced. You know, you have great uh, knockouts matches. You have great tag matches. You have, you know, X Division. And of course you have your world champion and then your tags. And occasionally, you know, you have a good, you have a good solid death match <laughs> it's not too much but it's the right balance yeah agreed just enough blood just enough just, like oh. just enough you know for people that may there's you know there's people that that's not their cup of tea you know death okay. match wrestling and that's okay you know but i feel that impact does a great job in balancing everything there's even comedy in it too yeah <laughs> just enough just enough just enough it's a solid balance and like i said you know i agree with you wrestling should be fun it should be entertaining and there should be something for everyone yeah and there's so much of it out there in the world now oh gosh yeah and also i think you know with social media you know television youtube twitch all these streaming platforms, it's just more accessible versus oh. like tape trading. God, I just showed my age. <laughs> <laughs> tape trading. <laughs> tape trading. Uh, I'm 36. Don't worry about it. I hear you. <laughs> okay. It's all solid. It's great. Uh, another question we're going to talk about music. So at least that's what uh, some of the questions were about. One, uh, who's your favorite band? Who do you like now of all time? So I would say my favorite band. That's such a hard question. My favorite band is probably Depeche Mode. Um, 
my favorite genre is 90s grunge, kind of 80s dark wave. But then I also really, really love uh, 90s hip hop and R&B and quite a bit of pop. But I think my heart is, you know, 90s grunge. Also, uh, the post-punk era. So there's so, so many bands. There's so many incredible musicians. I think my first real love, like as a adolescent, prepubescent, adolescent was probably like new metal when it was you know like cold chamber and slipknot and static x and all the stuff that became really uncool really quick corn like i still love corn um <laughs> uh but yeah i would say like musically speaking like if i had to pick one it would probably be depeche mode um we just lost a member this year which is very sad very sad yeah. <laughs> post-punk who's your go-to on your playlist oh god that list is so long um well they were kind of punk but then they're in that post-punk era like bikini kill is probably like my biggest but then like solid yeah bikini kill but then like if i'm talking more like uh like new like joy division uh because i was kind of just on the cusp of punk post punk joy division and you're a morsey fan you know what <laughs> i do <laughs> you're a morsey fan it's okay if you just like joy division and you're just like morsey eh. here's the thing i love the smiths i love the smiths i can't say there is anything that morsey did independently that had the same like I didn't have the same connection but it's just because like you know like Morrissey is this like eccentric artist and you know I don't know oh god but I have so many favorites and like when I get off the phone with you I'm gonna be like idiot why didn't you say this this and this but it's like so many bands flood through your mind at the same time I would say yeah no like I you know the funny thing is I'm not like huge into Morrissey either I would rather listen to the and nothing against Morrissey, great entertainer, you know, great. Uh-huh. Leader. But like during like my time, like especially like during high school, I had a friend that was like, wor- would worship the ground Morrissey walked on. <laughs> and I'm just like, and okay. the- cool, <laughs> cool well, rock and roll, man. You can't tell them different. Like there's, they're so die hard. It's crazy. It's like the cult of Morrissey. And I just, I didn't join it. So like, whatever. That's okay. No, no. That's why I was like, no, I, I prefer the Smiths over. Morrison. Oh, hundred. I love- I'm just talking about discography, songwriting, mm. just everything released at that time. Like, I know it's over by the Smiths is my favorite song to put on when I've had like the, like, you know, when you just have those days where you're like, I am just going to go home and I'm going to starfish on my floor and be really melodramatic and I'll put on that Smith songs. I know it, the Smith songs, Smith song. I know it's over. And that's like my ultimate like emo moment, but there's yeah. Smith's hands, hands over fists. Uh, not, not so much for the more. I love the cure too. Big into the cure. I like the cure too. What's your favorite cure album? God, whatever one that love cats is on. <laughs> love cats. <laughs> love cats. <laughs> hand in hand it's the only way <laughs> I love, love cat so much it's such a weird no no it's okay mine is 10 15 on a saturday night <laughs> okay so, oh man yeah uh, i have so many songs like i have so much music i want to talk about but like it just depends like what era are we gonna focus on oh man yeah. I mean, if, you know, if we're just going to talk about like just punk in general, people are yeah. surprised that I'm not like super into the Ramones. That's, that's, but that's, the Ramones were just these commercially branded people. You know what I mean? Like the Ramones are very cool and historically very important. But to me, I don't think of punk. Like I think of like, I think like Black Flag and I think. Black uh, Flag. Yeah. You know, like. Henry Rollins are we talking about post okay so this is controversial but I'm a big Henry Rollins fan oh my god me too okay I got a picture of him actually like right up here um from the 100 club in London 
no yeah <laughs> oh do you remember when Rollins got really into like the whole like spoken word and he was doing these like big talks and stuff like that uh, also um you know a lot of people seem to miss out that he also did writing too he shared his like tour oh. like journals that I was like oh my god this is what happened on tour so I swear on my life, uh, this was like, oh gosh, 12 years ago, I had made this manifestation list of what I wanted that year. And one of the things, I don't know why, just this is what happens when you manifest. I was like, I really want to meet Henry Rollins. Like I have so much I want to say to him and I have so many questions because just like as a person I respect, what's that? Please tell me that came true. I was in Liberty Village in downtown Toronto, walking to the coffee shop. I walked to every single day. I walk in and Henry Rollins is sat there on his laptop. And I was just like, ah, uh, Henry Rollins is just in a random Starbucks downtown Toronto all by himself. And um, you can imagine with like the career he's had and like uh, probably the kind of people he, he attracts I was like I have no idea how I'm even to approach this but I was just like oh my god I was so uncool I was like oh my god are you Henry Rollins and he was like yes yeah. like you like there's yes. no <laughs> you got those shitty classic tattoos like you can't you know it's him but and then I like totally panicked and froze and I was just like I love I said something like I love you and like walked away like I fucking but it was just such an incredible moment that you know when you like manifestation I'm such a big believer that your word is your wand like if you want something and you start saying to yourself like I am the knockouts champion or you know, you really believe it to your core. Like you are so responsible for what happens in your life. And I'm not talking about the bad things. Like you can't control everything, mm -hmm. but like what you put into the world, that energy, it just, it's so important. And it's so important to always try your best to keep that mod. Like I'm, I'm going on a total tangent, but like. No, no, say, no. I, I'm totally like down with manifestation. I'm a huge believer in it. Oh man, it's incredible. And like, even when you forget about it, because people think all I've done is think about, I want this and I say this and I say it like this and I know I'm doing the right thing, but you can actually block your manifestation by like over-focusing on it. Sometimes it's just the intention you put onto it, put into it. You write it down and you know that you truly believe it and this is what you want. And then it comes true. So it's just the world works in its own way and we all hear it and it comes to you when it's supposed to come to you. And I'm sure there was more to that Roland story, but it was just like such this, it was probably the only time I've really been starstruck. I was like, I, I blew that. But like, maybe that's all I needed was to know the power of manifestation. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, things just get delivered um, just to show that it's there, you know, mm. like, Hey, you know, universe, world, divine, God, whatever you believe in, it's all yeah. essentially roughly this, in my opinion, the same thing that that's up to debate. We're not going to get into that to people in the internet, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, kind of like a, like a pat on your back, like, Hey, got you. Don't worry. I got you. I'm, I'm here. What's your favorite post-punk band and your favorite punk band? Oh God. <laughs> See, it's like, ah. uh, well, I'll give you a list. Like, uh if we're talking like commercial wise uh i'm a big clash fan i love oh, no. drummer yep uh i actually have a clash tattoo oh. yeah uh, believe it or not i do and it's crazy okay. but uh <laughs> i love the addicts i love uh also black flag dead boys the germs i was gonna say i love the germs yeah love the germs let's see um, we're talking about back in the day, I was like, some of like, if I can think back to like my CD collection, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in high school, uh, I had New York dolls, uh, the Stooges, you know, classic stuff. Love the Stooges. Yeah. And yeah, uh, big, I was big into the addicts. Okay. Like super big into them. And yeah dead boys germs yeah oh those are the those are classics those are perfect uh i love billy idol so of course i was like a generation x fan love it yeah big time 
And as I got older, I got into like, you know, Rancid's cool and all, but it's not like my favorite. Like, yeah. I like certain albums from Rancid. It's easy listening. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, lower class brats. I also like, uh, you know, for going into like the rockabilly and psychobilly draw, uh, <laughs> genre, I love the like the Necromantics, Tiger Army, some AFI stuff, you know. I never got really into the rockabilly, but when I spent some time in Mexico really early in my career, there was like a whole like cholo rockabilly scene that I was like, this is really cool. Like yeah. it was all like Rocks- that. that- yeah it's like it's crazy like just like the influences like you can see like everywhere totally yeah and it's just so different than what we have here um but yeah it's just it's cool to have variety man like it's there is nothing wrong with the ramones and the clash but like commercially things and there's like i don't believe in like selling out like make your money boo boo but i mean Get like that bag because right you you know people gotta eat totally yeah like no no shade no no tea but like you know that's that's you know, you, you go to a any kind of major department store you're gonna find a clash t-shirt and a ramones t-shirt and you know you're lucky I'm, you'll find an attic shirt too yeah <laughs> if you're lucky the classic one with just like the face like monkey's face that says oh, like yeah. um let's see you know like I just it's just so much man like oh I know um I also like ska a lot <gasps> okay okay I, I like ska. I like like the specials madness mm. I love those two classic classic ska yeah so we should uh get to discussing things you know where we can see you in all your classic matches and anything upcoming so we've got I don't know if you know this Impact's on YouTube. I mean, they've always been on YouTube. It's on YouTube. (laughs) They've always been there. But this time you could become an Impact Wrestling Insider for 99 cents a month. Right now for a sell of 49 cents a month at a discounted rate. And you could become an Ultimate Insider for $4.99 plus any taxes and fees wherever anyone's at. And you'll get the Impact Plus events. And also, of course, lean back to Impact Plus. You can choose for $7.99 a month. You can choose for $71.99 a year, but I'm quoting prices without taxes. So there's that. At least, you know, all those classics. And also you get the show every Thursday. Yep. Anything you want to put out there for your fans? Anything positive you want to say? Of course I do. Yes. Listen to my podcast every Wednesday. We get wild on Wednesdays. I have all the biggest female and male stars in professional wrestling today. And uh, the big thing about my podcast, which different differentiates from all other podcasts is I'm a professional wrestler. My guests are professional wrestlers. We've likely known each other in the realm of kind of like five to 20 years. And you're going to get like a real insider scoop. And it actually ends up turning into chaos because I don't know how to behave properly in public settings. So, you know, we talk about dating, we talk about backstage shenanigans, we talk about life trauma, and, you know, we end up having a really good time. It's just like this really casual conversation style podcast. Started as a podcast, it's really picked up traction on YouTube, so you can watch the interview completely come on hinged as it does and uh we drop a new episode like i said every wednesday it's available on every major podcast platform and on our good friend youtube where you can also catch our weekly impact shows you can catch me on instagram and twitter at real taylor wild that's wild with an e i'm also on tiktok it's something like Taylor Wild or the, I think it's the Taylor Wild on TikTok. I think I'm very funny. I need like three more people to get on there and give me a like so they can feel, make me feel like I'm also funny. But that's it. And like, don't take life too, 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 too seriously. And uh, yeah, please laugh. Continue laughing. Continue supporting me and see who I kiss next week.